Yeah. This is Geek Therapy Radio. What are we waiting for? And now your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger. Welcome to this edition of Midweek Geek on Geek Therapy Radio. I am your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger, and it's weird for me to talk right now because I have a temporary crown on one of my teeth, one of my upper molars. Because today, just mere hours ago, I had a root canal. And you're asking yourself, what? He's still going to record a, a podcast, a, a midweek geek owl. Ow. With a root canal, I actually did just... Uh. Yes, I am. And honestly, it's not the tooth that is sore right now, which I guess makes sense because it's a root canal. There's no more nerve in there but they you know they did a lot of work in that area of the mouth so it is sore and the muscle of my jaw is sore and wherever they injected novocaine is sore but you know i took a couple advil i'll be fine i'm just bringing you a midweek geek this year this week despite having a root canal mere hours ago because i love you all so much and frankly while i was sitting in the chair i was thinking of this subject you clicked on the title of this podcast you know what the subject is and i was sitting there thinking while they're doing all their things with the drills and the bits and the doodly dads i'm thinking wow i I think i want to talk about that today on my show if possible so let's get into it um wisdom tooth and all i prepared a i prepared a thing about it i prepared something because it's it's more fascinating hopefully i don't rip my temporary crown out My tongue keeps hitting that part of my mouth, so we'll see. We'll see what happens here on live, a.k.a. recorded Midweek Geek. Um, But this is a fascinating subject to talk about, and I I actually actually had to do a bit of research. So I prepared something in that, um, and we're just going to dive right into it right now. And that is, why hasn't the United States adopted the metric system? Well, first of all, we kind of already have adopted the metric system for quite a while now, actually. To be a bit clear, we've actually been taught and we use both systems of imperial and metric measure, which in itself really isn't helping things. The fact that Americans are technically familiar with two forms of measure isn't an achievement. It's just inefficient and opens itself to increased probability of consequences, of course. The difference between an inch and a centimeter can quite literally be life and death think about it your doctor better be certain about the length of an incision when a uh, when building a skyscraper a difference of a millimeter to the fraction of an to a fraction of an inch in the lobby can topple the hundredth floor to the ground it adds up that little mismeasurement at the bottom you gotta be you gotta be deathly sure of your measurements But let's hop in my DeLorean and go back in time a few centuries. Why is it that the rest of the modern world is almost 100% metric, but most Americans still measure in feet, inches, pounds, and ounces? The answers are pretty cool, actually. Otherwise, why would I be doing this podcast? First, before I go over a little bit of world history, I'll give you the date and location that the metric system was developed and started to gain traction. Then I'll give you about 10 seconds or so of dead air to formulate your own idea of the historical, psychological, and topical, topographical reasons why the metric system had such a time, uh, hard time treading water. The metric system was developed in France and refined in France throughout the 1700s. Now think about that, why that's important to the United States not adopting it. 10 seconds or so, right here. Just think about it. Okay, that was roughly 10 seconds or so. Uh, Yeah, it was France who developed and refined the metric system throughout the 1700s. So, while Europe and even England were close enough to France to stay reasonably in the loop, Americans across the ocean in the colonies were already well on their way towards independence and had their own society fairly well established. 
After winning our war and declaring independence from England in 1776, France, who had been our ally and helped us get that independence, grew increasingly incensed at our young country's budding economic alliance with the crown post-war. In other words, France helped us defeat the British. France was still enemies with the British, and now the United States was entering into uh, economic treaties with the British. All that to say this, France felt that the United States stabbed them in the back and didn't invite us to Paris to learn about the metric system in 1798. Even if we were invited to Paris to learn about the metric system, the United States concluded two things. That our standards of weight and measures across the then 22 states was sufficiently uniform to function without alteration. Miles and yards were born from once arbitrary measures, but still everybody knew exactly what a mile was and what a yard was. Why confuse anyone with a new standard? The second reason is Napoleon Bonaparte's failed tenure as leader in the early 1800s. The United States didn't want to adopt France's new standard of measure if France itself was going to fall. Okay, so let's take a breather for a second. Yes, that was a sumptuous feast for all of those who call ourselves history nerds. But let's start talking about this in a more, a little bit more loosely. Well, more loosely after these last spasms of nerdiness. Fast forwarding through history, the U.S. government had multiple opportunities to officially require the population to convert to metric, not the least of which being ever increasing international trade in the general global, global, I can't even pronounce that, root canal globalization ushered in by the machine of capitalism itself. Hold your saber rattling. I hear you in the back of the peanut gallery shifting in your seats at that word globalization. Globalization. Bad. We invented the telephone. We Americans invented the telephone, radio, television, and internet. Americans made the world small so that we could take one small step onto the moon. The last 100 years of the Industrial Revolution meant Americans had no choice but become acquainted with the metric system. How else could we service foreign cars? How else could we trade with the world? There had to be a standard, and due in part to our geographic isolation to the rest of the world, the metric system has been creeping in ever so slowly. As of now, each legis each legis I can't talk. As of now, each legislation on the matter out of Washington. Washington has altered the mandatory requirement down to voluntary. So every bill that came in front of them, every bit of legislation said that it was a mandatory shift to metric, but they always changed it. They changed the requirement down just to make it voluntary. So as of now, we have industries that are quote unquote hard metric, like medicine, 10 cc stat, two millimeter incision above the aorta. Maybe they're not always yelling, maybe in the army or something. And soft metric industries like food and beverage. Look at your bottle of Coke. Most likely it shows measurements in both standards. We buy a 16 ounce soda and a two liter bottle. Tying this all back around to a statement I made near the start. It's not that Americans are stupid and simply aren't taught the metric system. We are taught both, but that is inefficient. So why haven't we taken the plunge and adopted the metric system in full? Why isn't it mandatory in every area of American life? Well, the first reason is concrete. Not like cement, you know, concrete. But cement and concrete are different. Anyways, but a solid indisputable fact. And likely nearly everything else, and like nearly everything else in life, that fact comes down to money. The cost to pull the lever and switch exclusively to metric is astronomical. Every shred of technical data Americans have, Americans have ever written, every patent, every blueprint, absolutely everything has to be officially converted to metric. The bulk of our infrastructure has been built imperial. Remember what I said earlier? You can't just replace a one inch bolt in a bridge with a two centimeter bolt. Two centimeters is roughly 0.79 inches. 
That discrepancy will take a conversion or else it will cost lives when the building collapses. That conversion and billions, if not trillions like it, will cost money. For instance, NASA reported that converting the space shuttle's relevant data and blueprints to metric would cost $370 million. That's almost half of a space launch itself. Again, this is just one machine, a very highly specialized machine. Granted, I know that. Now think about every other machine in the bulk of American infrastructure. How much would that cost? The answer is... Mm, I was about to cuss. A lot. <laughs> so needless to say, the transition to metric is cost prohibitive. The only viable transition is incremental or as we go. The second reason is mostly just my opinion, but like any opinion, you may or may not actually agree. I'm sure you have observed the pride and stubbornness that Americans are born with. Even the most utopian hippie among us harbors a strong pride or feeling towards our country. Whatever your politics, it is likely born out of a love for your country, and rightly so. Only people who love something will fight for that thing. So your liberal or conservative neighbor loves your country just as much as you do. They just think it requires a different approach to discipline or lack thereof. However your pride manifests, it is there. How many S's did I just put in manifests? So it is no surprise that we harbor a fiercely independent nature to the rest of the world. Topographically, we are isolated by two oceans. We have turned this stretch from sea to shining sea into the most industrious, the wealthiest, and the most powerful civilization the earth has ever harbored. We have cured disease, sent humans to the moon, and can have toilet paper delivered to our window while we're on the can. What a time to be alive. All of this has been achieved through a fiercely independent spirit that attracted the best human beings from the rest of the planet, put them in one place. Together, we pointed to the moon itself and said, we will go there. And we went there. And now we point to Mars. Increasingly, these achievements have required the metric system. And despite our pride pushing against it, it is our determined American spirit that will ultimately herald in the most efficient system to support our new American dreams. I hope you've enjoyed this midweek geek here on Geek Therapy Radio. If you liked it, make sure you're subscribed and it's on your weekly podcast rotation. If you know anybody else you think will like it, maybe tell them about it. You know, tell them about the show or even better, send them a link. Until this weekend, take care of my geeks, be good to each other, including yourself, embrace your geek thing, and I'll see you next time on Geek Therapy Radio.